Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with TV Fork, and today we're going to be talking about gluconeogenesis, and I'm going to be explaining why if you are overweight and trying to lose fat, if you're not losing fat, chances are it's not because you're eating too much protein and that protein is converting into sugar. A lot of times in various carnivore groups, I will see somebody who is severely overweight and they will ask for help and ask why they are not losing any fat. And then they will post their diet and somebody who has no clue what they're talking about will often tell them that they are eating too much protein and that protein is converting into sugar and that is why they are not losing fat. And they tell them that they need to increase their fat intake and eat 80% fat in order to lose fat. So a few weeks ago, I ended up posting this. Too much protein is making you fat. Now that I've got your attention, let's talk about gluconeogenesis. One of the common myths I hear is that if you are trying to lose fat, you are following a strict carnivore diet and you are either not losing fat or, even worse, gaining fat, then the reason you aren't losing fat is because you are eating too much protein and that protein is converting into sugar and you need to eat less protein and up your fat intake. This is nonsense. I'll get into the real reason you're not losing fat a bit in a bit first. But first, let me explain why the protein you are consuming isn't magically converting into sugar. Humans have existed in our current form for hundreds of thousands of years, and for the vast majority of human history, food was scarce. Because of this, our bodies needed to be as efficient as possible in order to minimize energy expenditure so we would not starve to death. Whenever we consume something, our body has to convert that into something else, which requires energy. The closer the thing that our body is converting is to the thing that it needs to be converted into is going to require less energy. And the further away that thing is that our body is converting into the thing that it needs to be converted into will require more energy. Let me explain. Let's say you drink a can of Coke. For your body to convert the sugar in that can of Coke into glucose, it will be a relatively simple conversion, which means it won't require much energy. If you eat a stick of butter, it won't take much energy for your body to convert that into stored body fat, since all your body needs to do is use a bit of bile and lipase to break that fat down and turn it into free fatty acids that can be stored as body fat. To convert protein into sugar, gluconeogenesis, is an extremely inefficient and very high energy demanding process. First, your body needs to break down the protein and convert it into individual amino acids, which already requires more energy than simply converting sugar into glucose or dietary fat into stored body fat. Once the protein has been broken down into individual amino acids, those individual amino acids need to be converted into glucose, which, again, requires more energy. Then once the protein has been broken down into individual amino acids and converted into glucose, it needs to go through yet another conversion process to convert the glucose into triglycerides, which can then be stored in your fat cells, which, once again, requires even more energy. Converting protein into sugar, and then sugar into fat, requires a tremendous amount of energy, and while gluconeogenesis is a real thing and does happen, if it was that easy for it to occur, then we would not have survived as a species because it is simply too inefficient, requires too much energy, and we would have starved to death, since historically, food was scarce. Our body wants to use the least amount of energy possible, which brings me to why you are not losing fat if you are following a strict carnivore diet. The reason that you are not losing fat, even if you are following a strict carnivore diet, is because you are eating more food than your body required for your body in order to maintain homeostasis. Now, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but it's true. Next, the question is, how can we consume less food without crash dieting or having to count calories? Here are four simple things you can do to make it easier to consume less food and lose more fat. Number one, get a good night's sleep. When you don't sleep, your levels of the hormone ghrelin increase. Ghrelin is what is commonly known as your hunger hormone. What is less commonly known about ghrelin is that it is also linked to poor decision making. So, by getting a good night's sleep, your ghrelin levels will be lower, which will not only make it easier for you to control your appetite first thing in the morning, but it will also make it easier for you to make better food choices throughout the day. Plus, by getting a good night's sleep, you'll have more energy upon waking, so you'll be less likely to need a coffee first thing in the morning or down a high energy sugar drink to get you started. Number two, drink more water. Your stomach is stupid. It doesn't know if you're filling it with food or water. When your stomach expands, gastric stretch receptors send signals to the brain to let you know that you are full and to stop eating. Furthermore, most people suck at differentiating their thirst cues from their hunger cues and will eat when they should be drinking. So, the next time that you think you are hungry, drink a bottle of water instead. As a general guideline, aim for half your body weight in ounces of clean drinking water every single day. That's your body weight in pounds. 
So, if you are a 200 pound individual, then aim for 100 ounces of water and, if drinking water is new to you, then gradually build up to that amount. Try adding one cup, 250 milliliters, at a time. Number three, limit your meal to 15 minutes. There's no magical diet that will allow you to consume as much food as you want without gaining fat if the amount of food that you want to eat is more than the amount of food that your body requires to maintain homeostasis. Even if all you are eating is meat, by limiting your meal to 15 minutes, this will make it easier for you to avoid overeating. You also want to make better food choices and if your goal is fat loss, then you want to consume the foods that will fill you up the most while being the least energy dense. That is going to be leaner, aka higher protein, meats. You don't want to avoid eating fat, and you still want to consume healthy fats at each meal. But for fat loss, protein is king as it requires more energy to burn and will fill you up more. Number four, get off your butt and move around. The more you move, the more energy you'll expend. No, you don't need to spend hours at the gym, and really, you don't even need to work out, although it will help speed up the process and it will benefit you to do so. But you do need to move around. After your 15 minute meal, try going for a 20 minute walk. When you move, be it working out or even walking, your body's lipase production will increase. Lipase is the enzyme that allows our body to break down and digest fats, as well as the enzyme that helps our bodies to burn fat. So, by going for a 20 minute walk after your meal, your lipase production will increase and it will make it much easier for you to finally start losing fat. And there you have it. You don't need to crash diet, you don't need to count calories, you don't need to be scared of protein, you don't need to avoid fat, and you don't need to spend hours at the gym. All you need to do is get a good night's sleep, drink more water, limit your meal time to 15 minutes, and get off your butt and move around and you'll finally start losing fat effortlessly. Thanks for hanging around until the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video and comment down in the comment section as it would really help out with the algorithm. And also share this video so we can help get this information out to as many people as possible. And also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the icon in the bottom right hand corner and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos. For those of you interested in health optimization, you can check out the video in the top right corner where I discuss the six foundation principles. And for those of you interested in optimizing your performance, then consider becoming a member. It's only $5 per month and you get a ton of perks including exclusive access to this program design lecture series playlist above my head.